everybody! Thanks so much for stopping by and watching today. I will be doing my very first review of the year for Baiting the Lion by Jonathan Carroll. He's best known for a short story collection called The Woman Who Marries a Cloud and has also won awards, uh, I think the Locus Award and the World Fantasy Award for his trilogy called The Crane's View. Today I'll be talking about Baiting the Lion, which seems to have a, some mixed reviews. I'm seeing a lot of three stars, people confused. Raise your hand if you're one of them. <laughs> And then some are five stars saying it's like a masterpiece. The general premise of the book is five people share a dream one night and the next morning they kind of gather together and try to find out what they're supposed to be doing with the information that the dream gives them. They start to realize that the, their connection to each other is through their pasts and they start remembering more of that part of their lives. They're being called back to defeat something called chaos. We get to kind of follow them through that journey to find out what's going to happen. I'll start with things that I didn't really like just so we can end on a more positive note. <laughs> First of all, all the characters are super unlikable. <laughs> Vanessa and Dean are recently separating and Vanessa has a bit of a backstory with her anxieties and everything but they mentioned that she's overweight a lot, which is fine. You can have an overweight character as much as you want. However, Carol mentions it so much that you feel like it's something you should pay attention to, and it isn't. It has no relevance to the story whatsoever. Dean, all the information we get is that he's a business owner and owns a clothing store and is Vanessa's husband. <laughs> and then Vanessa is a singer for Jane, who is also a business owner. She owns a bar slash club kind of thing. And Vanessa sings there every once in a while and is a huge diva and really kind of snotty. The only information we get about Jane is that she's a lesbian and owns this club. <laughs> she, you meet her partner, but like, it's so fleeting. You don't have any information whatsoever about Jane other than those two facts and her little coffee date with her person. Caspar is, and I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's how I've been reading it. Caspar is Dean's business partner and they own a clothing shop together and he is more of a core character than the rest of the five, but I don't want to spoil anything for you so I won't go into it. Bill just lost his wife recently and doesn't know any of them, he just lives in the neighborhood. So we've got Vanessa, Dean, and Jane, Caspar, and Bill are these characters that share this dream. Carol doesn't give us much in the way of these characters before the dream nor afterwards. There's really zero development for them. The build up for what they're supposed to be doing or what they're going to do really, really gets sold short. <laughs> Something that also bothered me is that the separating couple, Dean and Vanessa, are inherently pretty polite to each other which I find a little unrealistic because as a reader you get to read some pretty nasty thoughts that they're throwing at each other and not saying out loud and I can't imagine anybody that feels that way about someone not speaking up and saying those words to anybody. So that was a bit odd for me to have these like nasty elements and then have them be really polite to each other out loud was very strange and kind of unrealistic in my opinion. Carol introduces a lot of really cool ideas and then he doesn't flesh them out, which is really annoying. The plot seems to build up to this huge climax and there isn't one. <laughs> it falls short, the storyline fizzles out. It leaves something to be desired for sure because as I was reading it, I was really excited about all of these elements he's introducing. I'm like, that's really cool. Where's that gonna go? And I just wanted to see how they would play out, but they don't. Like, what are the character skill sets from their past? What is driving these characters other than this dream? I mean, if I shared a dream just randomly with someone else, it would be like, cool, we shared the same dream. On with life. <laughs> we don't see the skills that they're supposedly supposed to have. We don't find out what chaos actually is. He introduces characters that he tells you the names of and I'm like okay this is someone we're supposed to pay attention to and then shortly after not even a few pages she's gone. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> and we never find out what happened or why it happened to these characters he's introducing either. I generally thought this was a first book of a series or a trilogy or something because he introduces so much. There's so much world building and then it just kind of ends. And so you're just like, okay, where's the next part? <laughs> 
found myself really disappointed that I didn't get to find out where any of these elements went, especially when they're hinted at throughout the entire novel. He introduces things that he hints at that he kind of drives into your mind that don't come up again for some reason. For example, some of the characters do know what these main characters are supposed to be doing and can't tell them, but then that idea, that premise that someone knows what they're supposed to be doing goes away and then no one knows what they're supposed to be doing. So that's a bit weird and hard to follow. Now I'll get to the good part on things that I really liked about this novel. As I said before, Carol does introduce a lot of really cool elements and fun ideas that kept me reading and I really wanted to see where those elements went. His writing is very descriptive and I found myself smiling throughout at certain points of the book and he uses beautiful language to describe things and I really enjoyed that and wanted to see where those things went. I could clearly visualize a lot of what was going on with the language he was using, which was really enjoyable. Some things that I really liked specifically is, so in the dream, everyone has something from their own little lives that comes forth in the dream and they kind of need to pay attention and amalgamate them together to figure out what's going on there. And part of Jane's is a story from her childhood and what happens there <laughs> kind of gave me a giggle and it's very amusing. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. It's very cute and adorable, the backstory there. I also really liked Casper's friend's view on life and stuff. Uh, he gets robbed, that's not really a spoiler. <laughs> he talks about how his friend says that there's stuff and you're allowed to like your stuff but be okay when you don't have that stuff. There's more important things than just having things in life. And he talks about kind of moving on and finding something else after he gets robbed to get over his grief for having his stuff stolen. There are so many enjoyable quotes in this novel and his way of describing everything in the setting is done really well. And I could genuinely see everything going on in my mind. So that was really cool with the descriptive language. Usually I get really bored with that kind of thing, like in The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings or whatever. I haven't finished reading those, but he gets too wordy. I think the description for Treebeard goes on for, I think, three pages. And I'm like, okay, he's a tree, got it, <laughs> let's move on. So I really liked the difference on how Carol used his words to describe it really beautifully and concisely. I also enjoyed the dialogue between all of the characters. Because they're so unlikable, there's a lot of snark thrown around, which Carol did really well with distinguishing who is who and their personalities and still having everyone's individual snark level. <laughs> I didn't hate these characters, even though they're really unlikable. They aren't the best humans by any means, but the way he writes them, you're intrigued. Overall, I really enjoyed reading the book more than having read the book, if that makes sense. I'm not sure how to explain, but the ending does leave something to be desired. Maybe I'm missing something or don't quite get the ending. Maybe it is a huge metaphor for how life is chaotic and that we don't really get to choose how any of it goes. I'm not sure. I gave this novel a four stars on Goodreads because I genuinely enjoyed reading the book. The journey of reading it was fun. I thought it was going places. There's lots of cool elements. It made me laugh, it made me smile, and I was also like <gasps> <laughs> But it definitely could have been a five stars if Carol had dove deeper into exploring those elements that he introduced. There are so many that don't go anywhere and it's really bothersome and I think it could have been so good. I heard this quote by a director or a writer or something in film. I'm forgetting who at the moment, but generally they say, don't have anything in your story that doesn't add to your story. Uh, down to like the blanket flap in the background. <laughs> Every idea that you introduce matters to your storyline. I think Carol drops the ball on this concept, but he does so with a bit of flourish, which is more enjoyable. The ending falls super flat, but reading the story up until that point is really enjoyable and if you're looking forward to reading that I'm sure you'll still enjoy it if you agree that the ending is kind of confusing. I did see it part of those three star reviews that people were confused and maybe they missed something and then other people were like this is great <laughs> and I don't really get why but if you're one of those people and you understand what the heck happened in that book, please leave a comment down below and explain it to me because I really have no idea. So have you read this book? What are your thoughts on Bathing the Lion? Let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. I love chatting about different ideas in books, especially when they're so split like that, especially since I might not be understanding the end so much. Maybe I'm missing something. <laughs> 
anyway that's all for now thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed what i had to say and if so please make sure to like and subscribe down below it really helps me out and don't forget to follow me on social media that's in the description box below or check out some of my other videos i have a lot of ideas coming super excited to share them with you thank you so much bye